thanks everybody for coming along to our first KX meetup in San Francisco. So it's very exciting to be here, exactly. <laughs> Gives me an excuse to come to San Francisco in the month of January and February from uh, snowy New York. So it's, it's different from what an Irish person is used to at this time of year. So uh, we have three great speakers here tonight and uh, we hope you enjoy it all. And then we'll be going for drinks afterwards to Louis, which is on Stevenson Lane, I believe. Um, which is two blocks away. Um, is there anything else I'm missing, Abby? Uh, was there anything else? Um, so I'll just introduce our first speaker, which is uh, Jay Han, who gave the same talk a couple of months ago in New York, and it was very, very interesting. So I'll hand it over to Jay. Thank you. Okay, hi guys, uh, I'm Jay, and I'm going to show you some uh, demo uh, plotting tools that you can use from Q and KDB itself without leaving KDB. So, its name is QPL plot. I'll explain the name in the background after sh uh, showing you a few plots. So, any demo is, you know, any demo requires an animation. So if you look at it, the, both x axis and y axis, they are both changing as the numbers keep piling up. Okay. So now the animation is done. I can tell you a story about a good round number of 100 million. It's a very good round number. I'm not going for billion because I'm a poor person, but 100 million serves our purpose very well. So what I want you guys to think about is how much time does it take to get 100 million data points? And if you think about it, oh, just to make it easy, we'll just use a random number between 0 and 1 as a data point, OK? It takes about 28 hours if you get one millisecond, you know, one random number. Keep piling them up, 28 hours. About three years if you do it by one second, OK? So what you can say confidently is that it takes time, therefore money, and a lot of expenses to get this amount of data. And you get the data, why? Because you think you can get some value out of the data. So what do we want to do? We want to see data as patterns, behaviors, mm, some, you know, anomalies and whatever else we can see, right? But nobody is going to sit down and go through 100 million numbers. That's just too much. So we try to do visualization to concisely summarize the data as much as possible and use our eyes to do brain's heavy work. So 100 million and you think, oh, I cannot beat it to my plotting tool. I'm going to sample some data because 100 million, let's sample it down to say million. A 1% sample should, be, should suffice. So you fire up some whatever the big guns that you have and try to do sampling, try to do it carefully, don't introduce any bugs there and then convert the data sample to what plotting tool wants. Because very likely your data you gather is not what your plotting tool would like to have as an input. And uh, so you have to do you know, conversion and then wait for the tool to finish and repeat because likely you made an error somewhere. You have to repeat the whole thing. Oh, by the way, this points to an uh, uh, interesting conundrum in that now you have maybe one out of 10 po uh, possibilities that you got everything right. Because you have a data source database somewhere, 
you have the conversion tool, you have the plotting thing. So you have three things, and one out of eight is the you know, possibility you can get everything right. So there are already seven ways you can go wrong. And actually, it's eight because even if you got right, you could be mistaken, you got it wrong, and repeat the thing. And I say 10 because, well, the world hates you. So it'll crash, you know, everything will crash. And, well, 10 because, you know, Murphy's Law can strike you when, even when the world doesn't hate you. And, oh, hygiene is very important as you convert and move data, slosh around, blah, blah, blah. If you ever like stash some data from one place to another place and, well, you have a database management system, you pull the data out and you have to kind of manage it now outside of management system. You have to do it yourself. Congrats. So, oh, I don't like this. Okay, so, so opposite of ingestion, you know, blah, 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 disperse, dissipate, um, can read it, and uh, at the end, spew and vomit. It just ties nicely with data hygiene issue. So the point is that going the opposite way of data ingestion costs you money, and your marginal cost of production goes sky high, because if you, know, if you take one unit of time to do something, now it takes 10 units of time or whatever, well, your productivity is shot. Your throughput is not one tenth anymore, right? Because you want to go home at the end of the day without having something done. So while we are waiting, let's try to do something like this. Write a simple script. And um, what we are going to do here is first line here. Oops. You load the Q QPL plot library and load the database, 100 million, and then pick out the column that you're interested in. And this line is just um, uh, bookkeeping. It just initializes the whole thing. So, you know, what it's doing is that we'll set the device, plotting device, to X Windows Cairo version, uh, set the color to blue. And then we are going to do a, make a histogram of the random numbers distribution, which is, by the way, uh, doing histogram would be one of the most important things and most frequent things you'll be doing if you're doing data analysis using plotting, because histogram is the one um, is the method you use to see the distribution or the patterns behind the data. And because I'm a nice person, I'm going to label my uh, plot. As a x, x, you know, value, frequency, blah, blah, blah. And to finish the whole thing. So let's just run it. And this is 100 million data random numbers. And spread around. So basically what it's doing is a zero and one. And these are 1,000 bins. And for each bin, we are counting how many uh, random numbers fit into that bin, right? That's how you do the histogramming. And the number you fit in here is 100,000 across 1,000 bins, 100 million data points. OK? So let me just do a, uh, then I can just show you this number here. This is the amount of time it took to, I got lucky because, you know, Linux file caching was slightly better than before. So it took 780 milliseconds in this case. It can take up to like five on my machine and ate up about two gigs of memory to load the data here, right? And then this PL hist histogram took 585 milliseconds and ate up just 1,200 bytes additional memory within your KDB. So what happened here is that we load the data into database as we normally would do, and 
we just tell the library, I want to plot the data, and it happened. OK. Oh, stingy crowd here. <laughs> By the way, that makes interesting video. So <laughs> don't be shy about clapping. <laughs> so now, let me show you more plots. OK, uh, kind of pointless, looks neat. OK, streamlines of you know, multi-dimensional uh, multi data. You take the contour you know, down to, this is like two sets of data, right? Yellow line, green line. And you can like, put the numbers here. Um, some transformation of the set data, another transformation. This is pointless circle, but circles are good. <laughs> some potential also plus and minus. And then, well, this is probably more familiar to the a lot of financial people. And, you know, we can still do the simple things. Oh, I like this because, just because, well, Q is supposed to be a vector oriented language. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to plot some vectors? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Far too kind. Thank you. OK, and nothing tells the world that you're a serious engineer like the logarithmic scale on your you know, plotting you know, <laughs> seriously. And nothing tells the world that I'm doing big data. You know, if you're doing just linear scale graph, come on. <laughs> and shout out to the Moscow people. They are doing the meetup tonight, or are they already done it a few hours ago? And it's kind of like random data things. And then you can kind of do kind of like you know, animation style. And this only just to show you, show off the you know, possibility, you know, ca capability of the you know, like hue, saturation of the colors, and so on and so on. You know, like this. And then, you know, more scientific looking things. <laughs> okay, now, this is going to be, uh, oh, I just made it like this so that you can see a whole bunch of options that you have in this library about uh, how you make the plot. So. Uh, interactively, I can show it on the uh, windows like this, and I can go down to like uh, PDF and blah, blah, you know, SVG, ping for your web browsers, and uh, SVG for the web browsers too. And a lot of other, you know, there are some other drivers I haven't installed on my machine, but uh, should work just fine. So I'm going to just this time use X Windows. Uh, I just a lot of shaded graph here, you know, you know, contours around uh, in the you know, nice sidebar about the magnitude of the quantity you're plotting and things like that. What's a boba? I have no idea. It's, uh, <laughs> it's an example I got, and I, I don't want to f speculate the meaning behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and, you know, some, so, some, you know, weird looking things. And then now, I'm going to do, uh, this time, device. I'm going to say demo.pdf. Done. Right? It, it just doesn't take much to actually write the PDF. So let's just open the thing and let me see. Let me make it bigger. So this is what you get as a PDF file. And then this is like the data, uh, the colors, uh, the magnitudes on the Z axis. You're looking at X, Y. And then you can see, okay, smudge it with the whatever interpolation algorithms that you have to you know, see the you know, shades around there. And then, oh, I want to see it more like 3D, and then you can see different styles. Okay, quit this PDF. I'm done. So, 
let me then tell you a little bit of story behind QPL plot. So name is obviously Q plus PL plot. And I wish I could pretend that I wrote all the code that made these colorful graphs by myself, but I won't and I cannot, right? So PL plot is an open source library that has been in the works from about this time, 1992. And I think there was some check-in uh, just the other day. And there will be a new version coming out in a few months' time. Uh, so it's been in development for a very long time, and fairly you know, robust. And what I've done is basically wrote a Q front end so that you can uh, use a library from just by writing Q. And why did I do that? Only because, well, I kind of like Q, but then I don't want to switch out to you know, export data out into somewhere else and plot data and then go back and forth and stuff like that. And so I just want to stay within KDB. And I don't like, like jumping back and forth between different languages if I can help it. So, and then, you know, a little bit of an issue as to database manages data very well. Why pull the database? I mean, wh why, you know, take the data out of the database? And don't, I, I want to like, avoid unnecessary, you know, unnecessary samplings and introducing biases in my analysis as I, you know. So basically, what you will be getting is a set of APIs that you can use interactively, as I demonstrated here. And by the way, in case you ever doubt it, everything I ran, nothing was pre-computed or anything like that. It was done in all real time. All the you know, Q code was running as I pressed Enter, and it kept popping up the graphs and, you know, And uh, I've shown you like PDF example. So you can, you can set the API and say, okay, uh, write my plot to this file or something as, you know, from the AP, using the API and run it without you know, drawing anything on the screen. So it, that could be useful if you're writing some reports and things like that. So let's just take a quick look at the original uh, API from plot of, you know, so I use plhist for histogram. And this kind of looks, this is the main page for that. So it takes six, six arguments and you can see the types of the arguments, okay. How, what data points count and then the array of the data. And then, you know, you need to give it like mean and max, number of bins and so on then you can see that PLHIST in QPLplot takes exactly the uh, same forms. So that way I don't have to write main pages again. But then uh, there are a couple of wrinkles is that K allows up to, Q, uh, up to eight parameters in the function. And if you go above eight, Q says, uh, take param and wouldn't let you do anything. Some of the plot APIs, the worst one takes 24 arguments in C. <laughs> so some, you know, wrangling around. So you know, I'm trying to like document it correctly. So uh, when people use it, they, they can go back and say, okay, for this, oh, I have to do something con a little bit contorted, but then that cannot be avoided. Okay. So, well, very soon it'll go up there. And this is my email, and you can you know, just mention QPL plot. And I'll take some questions and try to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Just really generally, what do you use QPL plot for? 
Oh, um, yeah, simply I'm just starting, I just noticed the poverty of the plotting tools that, you know, that does what I like it to do. I mean, I could use some other things out there that, are, you know, by no means they're bad, they're good, but then I just want to stay within the QDB, I mean KDB and do it inside. I'm just playing with it, it's my hobby actually. It's, so I, I don't use it for production just yet, I can't yet, but then it's nice to have plotting tools. Okay, some other questions? So, um, I was, before we were looking at the map page, the uh, PL plot, they use a different data structure for the data set that it feeds in, right? Compared to Q, so how does that transfer work? Because oh, it looks like you're not copying anything. No, I'm not copying, okay. For the most data, I, I'm guessing most of the plots you'll be making is kind of one dimensional arrays. For that uh, case, uh, access method is exactly the same. It's a C. Yeah, yeah. So you can, you know, in the PL hist, all, only thing it does is, uh, okay, where is the array in, inside the queue? Pointer, pass the pointer to, to, the, you know, to the API in the PL hist uh, API. That just takes a pointer argument and it's read only. So PL plot does not change anything. So we just, you know, then it just takes the argument and then runs it. Okay. For, so there is no overhead for the uh, simple one-dimensional cases. For two-dimensional cases, uh, because the way Q lays out its data structure in two, you know, 2D matrix is different from what PL plot expects, I have to do you know, a little bit of wrangling to make that work. But uh, for, the, for this kind of one-dimensional cases, there is no uh, extra memory. Is the overhead significant for like the 2D and higher cases? Uh, I would say not really. I mean, it, it, it will have to, you have to like construct a bunch of you know, pointers. So yeah, there is that overhead, mm -hmm. but then that still, yeah, you just you construct them and then you know, just keep the pointer back to, to the PL plot and PL plot takes and run. Okay. You know, yeah. Because right now my plotting solution for K mm -hmm. is actually to integrate it with uh, R. Mm -hmm. But then you need to pass the data into R. Right. Large data sets. That's just right. That's, uh, so that is a uh, use case I kind of wanted to avoid right. so that I don't have. And then this way I'm staying you know, all within Q. Right. I don't have to like learn. R or anything, I don't have to write out R script or anything like that. I don't have to export the data to disk or convert or anything. I can just do it you know, inside and data stays within the database. Right. Okay. 